Let's bring in Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danone, to discuss all this. Ambassador, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. What, what do you think your strike accomplished over the weekend? Thank you for having me, David. Thank you. We send a, a very clear message here to the Iranians. Don't mess with Israel. What they did uh, last month, sending 200 ballistic missiles into our cities, we said that we will retaliate, and, and we did. And, and what we showed them is the capability of our pilots to reach any destination in Iran. And they are vulnerable. They are aware of that. So we decided to, to attack military targets this time. But if they will continue to attack us, we can get to any destination in Iran. Well, you had a, you had a first wave uh, more than a month ago. That took out a lot of the air defense systems that they have. This this one took out a lot of the missile facilities. Is there going to be a third wave? I know you don't want to obviously telegraph, but but people are kind of on the edge of their seat. We, if Iran doesn't do a counterattack, uh, will there be another attack by by Israel? We are a peaceful nation. You know, we don't seek wars. October 7th was brought upon ourselves and the attacks from Hezbollah and also from Iran. If Iran will not attack Israel, we will not attack them. But unfortunately, they focus only on aggressions, usually with their proxies. But in the last few weeks, you know, they crossed the line. They attacked us from Iran, sent directly missiles into our communities. I hope it will be quiet. If it will be quiet in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, it will be quiet in Tehran as well. Let me just ask a question about uh, your relationship with the United States, specifically on, on your efforts to defeat Hezbollah and Hamas, including strikes within Iran. President Biden says he will not support an Israeli strike on sites related to Tehran's nuclear facilities, but, and this is an important but, he has also said in the past that he will, and I'm quoting him, never allow Iran to get a nuke. So how do you square those two priorities? Well, we hope that the international community, including the U.S., will understand that if you sit idly by and watch what's happening in Iran, they will achieve the nuclear capabilities. Very similar to what happened with North Korea. One morning they announced that they have the capabilities. So we cannot allow it to happen, especially after what we saw coming from Tehran, the aggression. But we hope that the U.S. and other democracies will have the courage to stand up against evil and to block Iran, to apply sanctions, to cripple them, cripple their economy, isolate them diplomatically, and basically uh, not allowing them to achieve what they want to do it. But if we will not have a choice, we will do what we have to do. We have shown the courage that we have. But don't you need U.S. support to attack their nuclear facilities? We know that they are way below ground. They're about 200 feet below ground at least. They have, they're well fortified in concrete, et cetera. Uh, don't you need the, the kind of technology that the U.S. can provide to have a successful attack against their nuclear facilities? It will definitely be easier for us if we will get the support of the U.S. and, and other democracies. But when you look back at our short uh, history, most of the wars we fought ourselves and we won ourselves. So yes, we will need the uh, ammunition, we will need technology, but at the end of the day, we don't expect anyone to fight our fights. Uh, we do fight the same enemies. Uh, so that's why I think the U.S. and other countries should stand with Israel, support Israel, but uh, at the end of the day, we are fighting our wars. Now, now, President Biden and his team uh, were under the impression that you could sort of talk the Iranians out of it through these, these nuclear deals that they had, dating back to the Obama administration. Uh, I don't think President Trump was as naive as that. In fact, he had his maximum pressure campaign that cut off their revenue resources, was very effective against stopping their expansion, not only uh, with their nuclear facilities, but also in, in funding terrorism. Uh, I, I suspect that, that you go even further and suggest that it is not going to be possible to stop their nuclear expansion unless there is a strike. Is that true? Well, I think there is still an option to apply sanctions and put pressure and cripple the economy of Iran. But will sanctions, uh, forgive you, me you for interrupting, them. Danny, but will, will sanctions be enough? It depends if, if you are determined and you enforce them. Unfortunately, what we have seen, some European countries speak about sanctions, but at the same day, they are signing contracts with Tehran. But if you really have crippling sanctions, I think you can bring the, 
the regime to a point that they will have to, to, to slow down or stop completely with their nuclear ambitions. Otherwise, I agree with you, you you're going to have to use military power to block them. Ambassador Danny Danone, please stay safe. Ambassador, good to have you here. Thank you very much for being with us today.